Hi everyone, this is Yossi here from Oz Espresso and today we are going to talk a little bit about the Rocket Apartamento. This is a great little machine um, and we, we're going to talk about what's going to be the first thing you need to know as the new owner. Oh, sorry, there's just a lot going on here. I'm going to try and do this. Uh, there's a bunch of machines over here and more machines over here so we're going to focus on this one and then uh, we t we're going to go through the different features and um, first time use. So this is a prosumer machine and that's going to be the first machine I'm going to be uh, recommending for anyone who's looking to upgrade from a Breville or from a Sylvia or from uh, you know uh, Gadget Classic or anything like that, those entry-level single boiler machines. Uh, this machine is a heat exchanger. It has an E61 group head. We'll talk about that. Um, it has a reservoir, so uh, you're not going to be able to plumb it in, but you see there's just like a lot of room. I think it's uh, about um, half a gallon around there. And then it has these really nice side panels um, and you can change the colors and, and there's a lot. So what you need to do is basically when you unbox it is, sorry, my phone is beeping. So what you'll need to do is when you get it, you fill it up with water and then you let it fill the boiler and then you flush it. You have to flush this already been done, but basically you have to flush the steam, hot water, and um, brew just to get all the you know factory stuff out, and then probably like a whole tank worth, and then uh, you can use it. Now, first time, if you never owned this type of machine before, uh, if you're gonna have a little bit of steam from the top, it's normal when the machine heats up. That's the vacuum valve. Basically, when the uh, steam is rising, it needs to escape, and then when it's cooling, it needs to let air inside the boiler. So that's gonna that's what's gonna happen. So if you're gonna have a little bit of steam over here, or maybe just a little bit of water from here, when it's heating up, then it's normal. Um, so we, this is really nice. As kind of like of a you know upgrade because it's a solid machine and the E61 group head is a huge advantage uh, first of all it's a thermal siphon uh, system so it's always circulating water from the heat exchanger to the front through and then that's why it's like super hot uh, to the touch and then you have the lever which basically have three positions you have home stationary when it's closed and then you have the middle one and then in between this uh, position and the full one there's pre-infusion now pre-infusion means that we're gonna have some some water out at a very low temperature now I'm gonna show you how to do it and this will allow you to basically saturate your ground so let's say I have you know I have these uh, super fine grounds if I'm going to force nine bars of pressure, it's going to block. So the, the, the coffee is super oily, it's going to block the water and then you're not going to get anything. But if you're going to pre-infuse it, um, then it's going to just trickle just a little bit of water. Let me show you. So just in between, you see how we get just a little bit of water. No pump is engaged. We're just gently lifting this up. Then if I press it all the way up, then the pump is running so basically pre-infusion will let you saturate the puck before you force the nine bars and then that's going to let you um you know get a fuller body espresso you can get more uh basically if you pre-infuse uh you know with the um what is it the lumber Zuccolinia mini it's already built in with another machines, uh, it's already built in or you have control over it here. You just do it manually, which I personally really like. And uh, before we're gonna pull a shot, I'm gonna talk about um, what happens 
and like the, the interface. So we have the on off switch over here. We have the solid green light. If it's uh, solid, then it means it's on and it's heating. And then there's a little sign here, which means that it's out of water. So now we're using it, it's working well. And let's pretend I'm gonna take the reservoir out. And where is the, um, hold on. Sorry about this review being a little all over the place, but I have a very nice lady who bought this and I figured it's going to be nice to just talk about it so she can have the video because of the corona and everything. It's just not possible to have in-person training like we used to. So this is the reservoir you see I've, I've uh, pulled it out. Sorry, here we go. So this is the reservoir. I pulled it from the top, you can look inside. There's a little o-ring down here that uh, you want to keep lubricated. Um, so this is going to help you to like move it up and down if you, you know, if you have your machine under a cabinet or something and you want to take this out to fill it or whatnot, it's a good idea to use food grade uh, lubricant. So let's pretend we're out of water, just going to use it and then it's going to blink. Oh, we're out of water, what's happened? So if you're, you know, for whatever reason, you're out of water and then, um, say, could put it back in and I use a little bit of water. Here we go. And boom. Now sometimes, yeah, there you go. Sometimes if the um, if the the light is uh, still blinking, all you need to do is move the reservoir up and down just a little bit, like so, up and down, for the sensor down there to really um, you know get the water in and create the ground. That's how this machine knows that it's full of water. There's a little reservoir under the tank. Um, anything else? Steam pressure. Super helpful. Now the default for this, if we talk briefly about, um, if we talk briefly about, you know, what does it mean to have a heat exchanger versus a dual boiler or a single boiler? Basically, you, let's pretend this is the, um, the boiler. So a heat exchanger is you have the boiler, then you have a tube that goes through it uh, and share the heat. So the metal is heating, but inside the tube, you have the water for brewing and outside you have the water for uh, hot water and steam. So they physically don't share the same systems, but they share the heat from the metal, if it makes sense. So that's kind of like how I see it. And then uh, because of that, the temperature of the steam is going to influence the temperature of uh, our brewing water. So you want to be at around 0.8 uh, for best results for brewing and steam. That's kind of like how I see it. I read a few articles about it as well. Super interesting stuff. Uh, and I feel that if you're, you know, one between 0 0.8 and 1, you have, uh, you know, the best of two worlds. You have enough uh, steam and you have, uh, you know, not too much hot water and then you can brew at a normal uh, temperature. Now, with these heat exchangers, it's also recommended to give them a nice flush. So before you even start using it, I always flush before and after. So I just like rinse it a little bit to let it cool down. So the water just sitting in the group head uh, can be like too hot for brewing even though the temperature is right. It's always nice to give it a nice rinse before I'm brewing and then once I'm done I also rinse it to let any kind of debris or like old coffee grounds out and flush them. The same about the um, steam one. So I'm gonna purge it to let the water and that that applies to all espresso machines or at least 99.9 .9 of machines you purge, you steam, and then you purge again to let any kind of milk or something that can get clogged there 
or build up, just, you know, do it. So uh, let's pull a shot. So I already flushed it a little bit. I'm just gonna clean this guy real quick. So you don't want this to be sitting there for too long. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do the pre-infusion just a bit for about five, four, three, two, one. And go all the way up. So we're using Pete's coffee. This is what I use for tests here at the shop. This is a little too fast. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. Uh, you can, you know, tweak the grinds. This is a little too fast. I would use uh, finer grounds and then maybe add a little bit more coffee. I didn't measure it. I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh, you have to work with a scale and you need to work with a recipe. And believe me, I know all about it, but this is more of a demo of like how to use and what to do. And if you think we need to make another video of like how to make the perfect shot, I'll do it. Um, what else? Yeah, just try not to crank too much on these. And then once you're done, we can take this guy, dump it and then flush it. And then, um, yeah, I think that's about it. It's a great little machine. I think uh, Rocket are very good and well built. I think uh, a lot of the times the difference between say a quick mill, um, expo bar and uh, Rocket and they all look the same from the outside. Uh, so what's the difference, right? I think what's the, in uh, the difference is inside is the build quality, the materials, um, you know, aftermarket uh, service, who can fix it, stuff like that is what makes the experience better. They're all good machines, but some better than others. Uh, and I feel like that Rocket is solid and that's why I recommend it. I also, um, you know, like to work with Lamarzoco and other brands, Rensilio, this little guy here just got I might maybe uh, review this soon. I don't know. Let me know what you think. This is the um, Rocket R58 sitting over here. Sorry about the mess. We have a Lamarzoco GS3, another Profitech, another R58, and this cool Seco. This machine, believe it or not, is like 20 years old or something. And it's well kept, very clean. Uh, just finished, I've replaced the pump on this guy. It's a great little machine. They don't make them as they used to. The new machines are not as good as these old ones. So this is great. And I'm gonna be fixing this uh, Ponte Vecchio soon. Um, do a little rebuild on this little guy. This also, check out the size of the boiler on this thing. It's huge. I mean, this size, the Apartamento have the same size boiler inside this machine. And look, look at the difference uh, I mean, it looks much bigger, uh, but this machine is very capable, even though it's small and it's lever. And I think Ponte Vecchio, uh, you know, they're one of the few that still makes this style of machines. This is a new machine, you can buy it. Um, I think it costs about $1,500 around there, maybe? I don't know. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, let me just see, here we go, alright, so thank you for watching, uh, comment below if you want to subscribe and all that, I'll appreciate it, you don't have to, um, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them, um, if you have any comments, how I can improve and stuff, I'll do it, I kind of just thought to, um, start making videos just because I know a lot about espresso machines and I wanted to share it. Uh, so I'm not very good with like video and um, editing and all, you know, all the little details, but I try. So uh, hopefully this thing works, whole YouTube stuff. Um, so thanks again and take care. It's Labor Day. So go out and have fun. Peace.